Hi, everybody. I'm Nancy Walling with TexasSports.com. I am a Texas ex, and I am joined today with fellow Texas ex, NECA and Polly, who I had the pleasure to coach in high school. So we thought it would be fun to catch up with her today and find out what's going on. Hi, NECA. How are you doing? Hey, Coach Walling. I'm good. How are you? Oh, thank you for joining us. I'm very excited about this. I composed myself because initially I jumped on, and that's when I gave you all the love. Hello. Should, we should have, maybe he recorded that. But anyway, <laughs> glad you could join us. We're real excited that you have taken the time out because we know you just got a new job. You're now the assistant coach at UNLV, and you had to make the move during this pandemic. So how's yeah. it going? How did that move during this pandemic go? Well, I'll just start by saying um, prior to me obviously making the move, I got to spend over a month and a half at home with family. And anybody who knows just the nature and the dy dynamics of this business knows that that is some, some time to just love up on your family that you don't necessarily always get. So I appreciated that more than anything. And then when it came time to move, my parents obviously were like, ah, you're going to move during a pandemic? I'm like, yeah, the, the, the job continues, life continues. Um, it, it, was, it was fun because it's a new chapter. It's a new, exciting adventure. Um, obviously, it comes with some stressors with kind of just the climate that we're in right now as a country and just, you know, as a world, honestly. Um, but getting out here to Vegas, this is the first city I've been in that kind of replicates what I'm used to being from Texas. I've been in Spokane, Washington, which was on an extreme. I experienced my first snow. It was the worst winter. I, I'm going to go off on the tail end. But it was the worst winter they had had in the past 10 years. And it was my first year there. Um, and then I went to Santa Barbara and I got to experience the beachy life. Almost every single day was amazing weather. And then now being in Las Vegas, um, just going outside, it's like being back home in Texas, minus the humidity. So I can live with that. Well, good. Good. You just kind of touched on where I wanted to go next with uh, you uh, finished it up your career, unfortunately, at Texas with another knee injury. We were just talking about the one that you got in high school playing Brittany Griner in the state tournament. So yeah. Texas, was it the same knee or the other knee? I don't remember. It was opposite. Yeah, opposite knee. I know it's still hard to think about that. But so you finished up your career at Texas and then you got still got drafted by the Seattle Storm. Mm -hmm. So after you finished that, kind of catch us up on, you just told us where you've been, but tell us why you were in those places and what you were actually doing there. Yeah, so... After I, Seattle, um, after I got waived from Seattle, I kind of decided, you know what, this is my way or my, this is my body's way of kind of transitioning me into the next step. And kind of what my, my journey looked like is I was pretty consistent with two things during my rehabilitation process was I made sure to leave no doubts, right? I control the things that I can control. So that was my, my nutrition. Um, that was my workouts, and that was just kind of having the mindset that if I wanted to, you know, be the best that I could possibly be when I got to Seattle, I had to make sure I was putting in the work. Um, and then secondly, I was pretty consistent. I prayed the same prayer every single night. I said, Lord, let your will be done. If it's meant for me to continue playing this game that I love, then allow it to be so. And if it's not, then just let me have peace of mind with whatever decision you have for me. So with those two things, I went into Seattle, um, and when I got waived, I was completely fine with it. And I, I'll never forget it because I was at home and sitting on my couch watching TV and Cheryl Reeves calls me and I'm like, Cheryl Reeves? I'm like, I had just made the decision to stop playing. I was in the process of trying to find GA positions. Um, and she was like, no, you got to come out to Minnesota. Um, so that was an amazing opportunity for me to just kind of put a closure to my playing career and what that would have and what that meant to me. Um, so I spent maybe a couple of a month or so in Minnesota. And then I had the opportunity to interview with Lisa Fortier at Gonzaga. So that's kind of how I made that transition. And I'll never forget the interview because it was right after practice. And I grabbed my phone. I ran into the, the restroom in the Lynx locker room. And I, I had my interview on the bathroom floor. Um, and it's really special because I called and emailed just about every single coach in this business. And people think it's really easy to get into it. You know, you have a coach who can help you out. Um, you know somebody who knows somebody, and here I am just basically putting, casting my net wide. Um, so when Lisa gave me an opportunity to come and join her staff at Gonzaga, I was completely just excited about it. Um, 
So I spent my first two seasons there as a video coordinator with them for two years. And then I transitioned and I got to join Bonnie Henriksen at Santa Barbara, which was funny because she recruited me and she also was somebody that I played against while I was at Texas and she was at Kansas. So that was a pretty cool experience just to get to learn somebody different and that being my first experience. Um, and then Coach Lindy called me and I was like, I remember you as a player because we played Stanford my freshman year when she was a senior and she lit us up. I'm talking about she lit us up. Lindy is now the head coach at UNLV? Yes, sorry. Lindy, Lindy LaRock. She's the head coach at UNLV. So she played at Stanford, coached at Stanford, and now she's our head coach. Um, so I actually had the opportunity to play against her when she was a player. Um, so when she gave me that call, I had kind of interacted with her a little bit from just being on the recruiting trail. But our very first phone call, she just had this like level of passion and excitement. And I'm like, okay, okay, we can, we can continue talking and learning a little bit more about you know, kind of your vision. And I fell in love with her vision and her passion, her, just the energy she had. It was contagious. And that's kind of how I ended up in Las Vegas. Um, excited about the opportunity that she's presented me with and just ready to get our kids hopefully back, safely back on campus whenever that does happen, uh, just to get to know them a little bit more and start working them out. Yeah, everybody's in the same boat there for sure. So I can only imagine how exciting that is. But I want to back up a little bit. So as far as I knew, you never wanted to go into coaching. So how did that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, that happen, or was I, am I just making that up? No, you're not making it up. That's funny because I remember we would always, people who don't know, like obviously I played high school basketball for Coach Walling. Um, and the fun thing for us to do as players back in high school where it was to congregate. She had a couch in her office and it was in between her and Coach Hundle's um, desk. And we loved to congregate in there. We wouldn't go to the cafeteria. We wouldn't go off campus to eat. We would go eat, we would go eat lunch with Coach Walling in her office. So that kind of just speaks to who she was or who she is um, for us as players and just kind of the impact that she had on us. Um, so back to the question that you originally asked, I did not want to be a coach. That was nothing that was on my radar. Um, I was excited to have the opportunity to play at every level. And then after that, I was ready to kind of just transition into life. Um, but after I, I left the Lynx, I told myself that I, I know that I want to be involved with the sports industry at some capacity. What that looks like right now for me, I'm not sure. But I know that I just love the microcosm of a community that sports just creates for you. Uh, so I decided that, you know what, when you don't know and you're not sure, the best thing to do is just kind of get a GA ship. Uh, you have the opportunity to kill two birds with one stone, right? You're pursuing a master's degree, which is going to serve due dividends for you, just kind of throughout your career, depending on whatever avenue you want to go in. And then secondly, you're touching all these different aspects that kind of fill you up, fill me up personally. I, I'm going to be able to be exposed to reporters because I thought that maybe I wanted to do um, broadcasting. I'm going to be uh, exposed to senior administrators because I, I loved just kind of figuring out different ways to better support our student athletes. And then I'm gonna be around the coaching world. You know, this is kind of my bread and butter, something that I'm, I'm comfortable with. Well, I know you said you didn't wanna do it, NECA, but my experience at Gonzaga was so eye-opening for me and it gave me such a different experience that I would be remiss that if I didn't give myself an opportunity to make the decision that I did not wanna coach, you know, without first being thrown into the fire. So. I would say that me getting into the coaching world is a large part, is due large in part to Lisa Fortier and her staff, because just be, being able to watch them day in and day out and the way they interacted with their, their players, um, she's very much so a player's coach. And everything that she does is for the well being of her players. And just being able to witness that and witness how her players received her was really special for me. And then I also had a young lady named Ikara Weiss who kind of, I took under my wing and she kind of just showed me that, you know what, Neka, like maybe you do have something to say and maybe these kids are listening to you. Um, so just being able to pour into her allowed me to kind of learn that this is fun. I enjoy doing this. And anytime that I can have my players come and sit in the office the way I used to sit in your office, um, it lets me know that I'm doing something right. That's awesome. That just, that's good. I'm so proud of you. So again, touching on that, getting into coaching, you know, sometimes when you're a player, at, you know, the high school level, you don't realize the, what it all entails as far as the coaching and the 
strategizing and the motivating the kids, just like you're talking about, because everybody's different and responds and reacts to different deals. Looking back, what have you figured out that you might not have known as a player going into now that you're a coach? Mm-hmm. Looking back, what can you say about maybe you as a player, what you might have done different or what you didn't know or what you could tell high school kids or college kids now that might help them out? Um, firstly, our coaches do not just come to practice and go home and the day is over. <laughs> I remember seeing Coach, coach Aston on the road and I said, man, I thought y'all – came to practice and then after practice you maybe watched a little bit of film and you went home I'm like well we're doing all the work so why are you getting into us we're the ones doing all the work and that is not it at all (laughs) your coaches do a lot of work for you and they're doing a lot of work that goes into your well-being as a student athlete but they're also making sure that they're doing things or they're putting things in place that are going to help sustain the program and continue to grow the program so whether that's you know recruiting which takes up a large part of your time Uh, You never have any personal time because you're always recruiting Um, or, you know, meeting with donors and speaking with donors, um, sitting in meetings with um, administrators and trying to just figure out different um, intricacies of, you know, administrative things that no coach wants to necessarily do. Uh, And just maintaining relationships. I think that that's the biggest thing in this in this industry is that we're naturally wired to be relational as human beings, but more specifically in our business. We got to be able to communicate, sustain, and foster relationships because that's that's kind of just the big meat of everything that we're doing. So, for me, um, as a student athlete, I would just tell you to really take pride in your ability to to build those relationships, and also take pride in the fact that people want to get to know who you are, and people want to help you, but they can't help you if they don't know what you want, you know, if they don't know what you need. So. Just, just be very transparent with the people that you're surrounded with on a daily basis. Be kind with them, be sweet to them, but also know that they're there to help you. Everybody's a resource and resources aren't buildings. They're the people that occupy those buildings. You have just touched on a lot of stuff. You've covered every aspect about coaching. So you obviously you know it's not about just teaching the game of basketball or drawing up X's and O's. And uh, so which part, if you had to pick one part about your coaching experience to this point, what what do you love the best about it? I think you hit on it earlier, but I just want you to reiterate it. What I love the most about it? I love my players. I, I love the relationship aspect of it. Um, it. It's really fun being able to watch them when they come in and they're somewhat shy and somewhat timid, not sure of themselves. And for me, with my players, I automatically, I'm said, okay, if you're going to speak in front of the team as the post player, as one of my kids, your shoulders are back, your chest is out, you're standing up straight. I don't care if you know what you're saying or not, you say it with confidence. And that's what I try and instill in, in my players, specifically my post players, because I deal with them um, more on an intimate level. But I just want to instill in them confidence. I want to empower them to do whatever it is they believe that they can do. I want to challenge them to get outside of their comfort zone. That's the biggest thing, because sometimes student athletes just get caught in, again, the microcosm of a community that is athletics and they don't venture off. And I'm like, you said you're good at, you love singing? Okay, well, let's go find an organization that can help you um, engage in that. Oh, you wanna go and do a foreign trip somewhere? Okay, well, let's figure out how we can get you with an organization that helps you fulfill that. So it's kind of more so just the holistic development of my players that I try and tap into because basketball is basketball. I mean, you're on a scholarship, You, you know that you gotta get certain things done with that. Academically, you can't play unless you're academically sound. Um, so now let's make sure that we're touching on other aspects that are going to help you once you graduate. Because, you know, Coach, Coach Henriksen at UCSB would always say, our kids aren't making a four-year decision. They're making a 40-year decision. And I was like, you're smart, Coach. <laughs> it's not a four-year decision. You're making a decision that's going to impact you down the, down the line. So as somebody who has been there and done that, it's kind of our responsibility to make sure that we're exposing them to things that they obviously knew they had access to, but also things they didn't know um, were possibilities for them. Because we all know like 17 to 22 year olds aren't going to always do the things that make them uncomfortable. They have to be encouraged to do it. Normal for a lot of people still, you know, even at night, it's hard to get out of the box sometimes. So I'm, I can tell you the girls that you're working with are going to be very blessed and you're going to are already having an impact on them. So 
uh, but I'll say this coach um a lot of what I've learned as far as coaching I and I'm not like I'm not saying it just because you're my coach and you're my high school coach but I am very appreciative that I was exposed to a coach who truly cared about their players about her players and you and you poured into us you know and even though I thought that I didn't want to be a coach in the back of my mind I was like coach Walling coach Walling was everything to us you know we didn't hate going to practice yeah sometimes you got into us but we knew it came from a good place so I told myself that if, if I ever did decide to get into coaching that I would have to replicate who you were to us you know because it's special it's special we're in a very like it's a hard industry to be in um, but if we keep in mind what we're doing it for and who we're doing it for, you know, it puts things into perspective. That means a lot to me, and I appreciate that. And I, I can say the same thing, too. I've been I've blessed for the coaches that I've had. Uh, my high school coach, Bob Schneider, taught me, you know, how to play basketball and skills and how to teach it. And then Coach Conrad, you know, how important it is to deal with the community and just the whole picture like you've been talking about. So, uh I'm, thank you for saying that, and I can pass it on to the people that taught me. So, you know, and, and you're going to have some kids later that go in and follow your path because of the influence that you've made on them. So that's why it just makes my heart happy that you're in this business because these girls are going to be very lucky because of you. So anyway, let's keep, let's move on. And uh, so Pflugerville is so close to Austin. You decided to stay home. What made you decide that you wanted to go to Texas and not go off somewhere? Because there's so many high school kids that say, I can't wait to get out of here. So what, what happened there? Well, there's two things. Um, you know me and you know my family. Anybody who's ever coached an African player know exactly how strict our families can be. And, you know, that's one thing. And then secondly, if I decided to be anything other than a Longhorn, then the alumni that I was surrounded by weren't doing their jobs in selling me. Because with the exception of my two grassroots programs, so my AAU coach and Felix Gray and Reginald um, Phillips, which were the AAU team that I started with, and then Tiffany Comerford, which was my seventh grade coach. Um, with the exception of those two, every other head coach that I've ever played for, whether it be basketball, volleyball, or track, is a Texas alum. Uh, I played, obviously, for you in high school. Um, I ran track for Susan Murphy and Coach Fagan. I played volleyball um, with um, two other uh, Texas assistants. And then I played for um, Clarissa Davis Reitzel for AAU. So I've been around the, just kind of the Texas culture growing up. And believe it or not, like I kind of, I told you my sophomore year, I, I had never stepped foot on the 40 acres until my sophomore year. And it was for a volleyball unofficial visit. Um, and I remember sitting with Coach Elliott, and he was like, well, well, Neka, you know, you have a scholarship for us. And later on that day, it was a dual visit. So later on that day, I was going to meet with Coach G. And I said, okay, thank you, Coach Elliott. Um, I'm going to go sit, and I'm going to talk with Coach G about it <laughs> and see what Coach G has to say about that. And I went, and I sat, and I talked with Coach G, and she was like, just like every coach, I kind of I figured out the, the facial exp expressions and different nuances of it now. Um, so she was kind of like, okay, um, we can, we can definitely, um, think about that. Your sophomore year after you spent one year with basketball. So after that, I was just completely strictly basketball, but anyway, back to the question, I decided to stay in Texas and play at home because, uh, there's a certain pride that comes with being a Texas Longhorn. We all know it. Um, if you've been exposed to it, there is a, a certain like, um, taste and flay and, and just kind of or in the air whenever you come downtown and you're amidst a Texas, um, Texas football game. So just being able to kind of engulf myself in that, being surrounded by that and being coached by all good people. Everybody I named was a great person. They were extremely impactful in my life as a young woman. Um, so being exposed to all of that, I just told myself that, I mean, if it feels good, smells good, it looks good, then it must be good. Um, so it was, it was something that kind of came through full circle and being able to stay at home, have my family be able to come and watch me, um, was a no brainer. So, yeah. All right, man, this is so much fun. It's just so good to see you because I missed you at the final four this year. And so the final four! It's a tough time for everybody without sports. So <laughs> but, 
know that I think about you girls all the time and just am thrilled that you joined us today. Is there any other lessons that you learned while from your time on campus that you want to share with anybody or anything else you'd like to say before we sign off? Yeah. I remember they asked me this my senior year and I, was, I probably had the same exact reaction. How do you kind of put into words, um, A, summing up four years for me back then and then now just kind of what Longhorn Nation has been to me and what it means to me. I don't know that I can. Um, all I can say is that the relationships that I was able to foster and sustain since then um, have been everything to me and they've been the, the same people who have kind of helped propel me through my career. Um, you know, I met Tasha Philpott. She was my government professor my sophomore year, I want to say. And you walk into a tutoring session to see your professor as your tutor. Um, safe to say that her and I have a great relationship right now. And she's been pivotal for my life as well. Sean McPherson, Angela Ortega, all great people who've just been um, people that I can always reach out to. Um, Anyway, I can go through the list. It's, it's a, a lot of people who have just been extremely impactful for me, but. Uh, all I've heard is for you and it's all about relationships. Yeah. So you have figured it out and I am so proud of you and can't thank you enough for joining, joining us today. And we're gonna just sign off on that. And uh, it was great catching up with you. And again, I'm Nancy Walling for texassports.com and hook them horns. Thank Thanks you, Matt.